Hello and welcome. Tonight we're going to be talking about something that happened back in 2007. But as we've been talking about in the studio tonight, the date of August 1st, 2007 is in our minds, uh, any of us who live in Minnesota or we're living here on that day because that's the day the 35W bridge collapsed. My guest today is a man who is on that bridge and he's going to talk about it um, tell us what it was like, tell us how it changed his life, and I think you'll find it very, very interesting. Andy Gannon is with me. I've known Andy for years and years, so it's great to have you come on and, and be willing to kind of walk us through this, Andy. You bet. Thanks for having me, Mary. You're one of the few survivors that has been as open as you have been. Um, why do you think that is? Well, for me personally, talking about it has been very therapeutic. Um, I think it's been able to allow me to understand that it happened and that it's changed me and that um, the more I talk about it, the more it makes me feel um, like just a stronger person um, for going through it. That makes sense um, to me. I think hard things are hard to digest, but by talking about them, we kind of process them and I remember Freud said once when we talk about something hard it's like a film goes over the wound and I always it was such a vivid vivid description um, walk us through if you would that day where you were going um, what was happening in your life that August 1st Andy you bet yeah I mean I remembered as if it was yesterday um, I'm sure that'll be the case for quite a long time, but um, at the time I was working in downtown Minneapolis and uh, the company that I was working for, we had, um, I'm in sale, I was in sales and uh, we had a, uh, uh, we had a sponsorship to an event that we needed to sell to make our budget. And it was the last day that we could actually sell this sponsorship. Um, at about three o'clock that day, um, we realized it's not going to happen. You know, we just, the other sales people, you're just not going to get a company to spend, you know, a significant amount of money at this time of day. There was a c customer that I had in the past, and I thought this might be an opportunity for this person, and really uh, pushed the envelope with this, with this customer and was able to show her the value of the sponsorship. Uh, and I sold the sponsorship at about 4 mm -hmm. o'clock, 4.15 in the afternoon. Um, so you were downtown at your office doing this? Correct, mm -hmm. yep. But... Uh, had I not sold that sponsorship, I would not have been on the bridge at the time of the collapse. Mm. So I went from the greatest moment of my professional career at this company to the worst moment of my life because of it. So mm. it was an amazing turn of events um, that I had no idea was going to happen about two hours later. Um, because the sale was so late in the day, I had to wait for some paperwork to come through and contracts to be signed. So it wasn't signed and sealed until about 5.30 in the afternoon. I would have been gone from the office earlier than that had I not sold it. Uh, I live in Apple Valley, and I was heading to a wake in Roseville. Mm. Um, I was there. I was heading there to support a coworker whose father had just passed away the Saturday previous. Uh, never met the man, but this woman was just a wonderful person and a very good friend. Um, but because of selling that sponsorship, it allowed me to uh, leave late from work that day. Um, hence, being on the bridge. So, like I said, I went from the happiest, proudest moment of my professional career to the worst moment of my life. Um, and that's kind of what I've taken from this, this situation is that you just don't know what's mm -hmm. around the corner. Mm -hmm. So you just always have to make sure you're doing everything the right way. I remember uh, getting my car from work just in the best mood. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got in my car at the parking ramp, I just thought to myself, you know, I'm, I'm going to go and support this coworker, and I'm going to go home and I'll celebrate with my family and just things seem to be um, mm -hmm. going really well and I was extremely happy. Um, an interesting part of the story is as I was driving down Washington Avenue, I looked at my gas gauge and I was at it just a little bit above, under, in between a quarter of a tank and empty. And I thought to myself, I think I can make it to Roseville, it's not that far. <laughs> um, and I just didn't want to stop because I wanted to get there and get home. Um, as I was driving down Washington, my wife's voice came into my head, uh, and she's always said, if you ever run out of gas, um, don't call me, 
because that's something that should <laughs> never happen. So uh, I literally thought to myself, I, I should get gas, I shouldn't get gas, I should get gas. And there was this anxiety coming on me and I was approaching Bobby and Steve's on Washington and 35W. It was my last chance to get gas. At the last second, I went and got gas. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to get a pump right away. And I actually, after the bridge, asked Bobby and Steve if they could send me a video surveillance of how long I was there because I remember being there very mm -hmm. short. I was there for two minutes and one second. So in and out. In and out. You, you, if you take that two minutes and one second mm. and put it onto where I would have been on the bridge, it puts me in a worse position. That's right. Um, That's right, because you didn't get all the way across at all, did you? No, I got about a quarter, quarter onto the bridge um, when the bridge went down. And did it start, I mean, you had, you heard rumblings. What was your first awareness that something's dreadfully wrong? Well, before that, too, I'll get to that in a second, too, Mary, but there was another interesting part is when I was on Washington Avenue, uh, if you're not familiar with the area, um, Washington Avenue, when you're heading east and you're ready to turn left on the 35 north, it goes into one lane where you can turn left to go down. The other lanes go straight. As I was in that line to go left, I noticed some cars going past all of us, and they would stop and put their blinker on to get into our, line, our lane. And I mm -hmm. thought to myself, what a bunch of jerks. You uh -huh. know, you, you should have waited like we did. Uh -huh. And I remember leaning over, and I was quite angry with these individuals. There were three of them. Um, and after everything's said and done, when this happened, if you look at where I'm positioned on the bridge, those three jerks possibly saved my life because they pushed me back yeah. three spots. Right, so again, chance kind yeah. of interaction. Yep. Wow. But w when I got on uh, the bridge, like I said, I was in a great mood, and the first thing I heard was a loud boom, and the bridge moved lateral and dropped a little. And I thought, well, that was weird. It must have been a barge that hit one of the beams in the water. So you weren't terrified at that point? No. Nope, it little... didn't drop enough that... Yeah. Exactly. That you were thinking this is it. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nope, I wasn't really concerned. I thought it was odd, but I really yeah. wasn't that concerned about it. Um, okay. I thought there was a barge that hit the, a beam, came to find out later. Just reverberation kind of Correct. thing. Correct, yep. And uh, come to find out later that there was no beam in the, in the water. It's a freestanding bridge with support on the land. Um, continued to move at a slow pace. And um, the next thing I heard was a loud cracking and breaking, and the bridge dropped about four feet all in one piece. Uh, we mm -hmm. all went pretty much together, and that's when I knew that this was serious, and uh, I had to get off the bridge. Um, proceeded to try to speed up, and I didn't get very far at all. When I looked up and everybody was at a stop, uh, the north end, which I was heading to, buckled up 40 feet, 50 feet in the air, slab by slab flipping the cars up kind in the air. slow motion in your, as you viewed it? Absolutely, it? It, was coming at, it was coming right at me. Uh -huh. um, and it was, it was a, such a surreal situation because you're watching these cars just being thrown about and watching some of them um, fall over the edge, which the bridge actually landed on, uh, on top of three or four cars, if I'm not mistaken. Um, at that point, I just realized that I'm going to die and that I just have to wait. Mm, wait for, for the to buckling me. to come and, and take you then. Yep. Yep. And, you know, we hear about people's lives flashing before them. Was, was there anything like that, or were you just, can you describe how you felt? I just can't imagine. Yeah, I, I, I did have the life flash before you. Um, it was really amazing because it was very fast, and it was pictures of from the time I was a youth all really? the way to really? family, So that's friends. not a, a myth, that is a reality then, isn't it? For me, yeah. Uh -huh. And it was what, was what was interesting about it was, it was so fast, yet I could actually process yeah. each picture. Wow. That it was like an extremely fast movie that was slowed down. Can you even recall now what, what pictures yeah. you had? Yeah, I have put oh. a journal together um, oh, yes. with those pictures. and. Some of them are things that I've uh, w that are on my bucket list. Um, some of them are just uh, uh, my mother who passed away, and um, family pictures, and just um, successes in my life hmm. that um, just hmm. came back. In that what a good film. idea to write about it. So now the bridge has dropped four feet. You see the 
the other cars coming at you and the bridge buckling. Then what? Well, when it, when it got to me, it, I remember it lifted me up and I was above everybody else. Um, our slab was. I heard a loud boom and it was the concrete coming back down. And then a second later, my car coming back onto the bridge. Um, and then for a split second there, uh, I thought it was over. But that's when the whole bridge went down in one, as one piece, what you've seen in video before. Um, I've always said if that could be back 10, 15 seconds earlier, it, people would be shocked and amazed at what had happened uh, previous to that. Um, then we just all free falled and went uh, straight down and just had to ride it out. And, um, and your car, when you hit bottom, did the car yeah. just bounce way up or how? No, not that I remember. I remember it bouncing and shaking, but I was still in drive. Oh. So I remember you know, I got the car in January, and it's kind of a funny story because it, it, it plays on how your mind works in these situations. So I get the car in January, this is August, and when I was in drive, when we landed, I was going right for the rear end of the car in front of me, who was about five feet from the next drop off. I crammed on the brakes and turned my car, and so I skidded like this to prevent myself from hitting him and pushing him over. And I mm. smelt the brake fluid instantly come, and I thought to myself, son of a gun, my brakes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I will never forget that, because oh. I'm thinking, for a few seconds, I'm like, who cares? You right. know, this is, this is the least <laughs> of my concern. Who cares about the brakes? But yeah. that's a human reaction, isn't yeah. it? So then you're, you're, you're not hurt terribly. No. Which is amazing. I mean, that your back or your neck or, you know, something didn't crack. And, yeah, and very fortunate. It really, really hurt you. So then what did you do, Andy? Well, after I stopped, um, I actually put the car in park, and I actually thought, why is the rest of the bridge in the water? Because I watched it go in slow motion in the water. Why are we not in the water? Uh, so I actually thought that we were going to continue to fall. So I actually went and reached and got my phone, and I left my wife. Uh, I called it. Basically, it was a goodbye call, um, thinking that that's what I was going to go down at any minute and die. Um, grabbed the phone, uh, it went to her voicemail, and at the time... You know, let, let me stop you right here. You brought the recording of that last uh, second message that you called her on, or with. Um, we'll listen to Andy calling his wife. You'll hear the phone ringing, and then the message machine, or the answering machine, picks up. But listen to Andy's voice, and it's, it's very gripping. I'm imagining that listening to that takes you right back to that moment. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's so hard to listen to. Um, and your wife was not home to uh, pick up. She was home, but she had her um, she had her uh, phone on vibrate in her purse. Oh, <laughs> so, so I've since didn't... teased her about it, thinking it was going to jump up and down and draw her attention. Um, <laughs> uh, but there is an interesting story on that. Um, uh, when the bridge collapsed and it got on the news, my daughter, who was in fifth grade at the time, uh, she saw it and my wife was actually outside doing a few things. She mm. came outside and said, Mom, Mom, you have to come and see this. So my wife came in to watch and saw the news. She said, call Dad, make sure Dad's okay. And my wife said, well, he doesn't take that bridge. He takes the Cedar Bridge. We live in Apple Valley, right. opposite direction. Um, she forgot I was going to the wake. Um, so she went back outside. My daughter continued to watch the footage and said, Mom, Mom, will you please call Dad? I don't like this. Something's 
wrong. wrong. Your daughter had that sense. She didn't see your car, though, did she? No, nope, not at this moment. Oh. And, uh, and she's a fifth grader, Andy? Yeah, yep. Oh. Um, she, she told me later that it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. So my wife came into the house, and my daughter said it again. And now at this point, my wife's a little frustrated because she was doing a few things. And she went and grabbed her phone and didn't realize there was a missed call and gave um, Kylie, my daughter, the phone and said, you call him, and then went downstairs to do something. Um, I was on the bridge still helping and my phone rang and it said my wife and I answered the phone and I said, Kim, Kim, you know, I'm, I was a mess. Uh, Kylie actually said, Dad, it's Kylie, uh, I'll get, let me go get Mom. My wife was walking up the stairs and my daughter was at the top of the stairs and said, Mom, I could hear her say this. She said, Mom, Mom, it's Dad, something's wrong, he's panicking. Oh. My wife said her legs went jello and she knew that uh, I was on the bridge at that moment. So she went up on the news and saw the car and that really hit her. Oh. Um, she understood I was okay in the car. She could tell that, you know, I was okay. But it was just the moment of realizing that it was real. Something like this affects the family in a huge way. I mean, we sometimes forget. We know it affected you, the others that were on the bridge. We forget sometimes the trauma that they go through too, yeah. and especially a child. Um, tell us uh, a little bit about what you did to help others because you you were telling me you helped the kids on the school bus. Yeah. We all know about the school bus. Um, tell us a bit about that post drop time. You bet. I must have been in shock because I could hear the kids screaming, but I was on the opposite side and I was just staring at the school bus. And there was a gentleman that was trying to get the back door open. The bus had actually leaned up to the side and was kind of jacked up a little bit so he couldn't reach it. And he looked over at me and he just screamed, come here, you know, mm -hmm. like, what are you doing just standing there? Uh -huh. And it kind of jarred me, so I jumped over the medium and went over and helped him. And we did a fire line and took the kids off the bus into uh, down to the street because the bridge had fallen onto the river road and there were um, cyclists and rollerbladers and people that we could hand them down to. Um, within a couple of minutes, there was now five or six other adults. And then I left the school bus and proceeded to the Tasty Bread truck that was in front of the school, uh, school bus. Um, thick black smoke was coming out. Uh, I could not uh, see a door to help this individual, but I could hear him in there uh, screaming. Mm -hmm. And um, within a few minutes, it caught on fire, and then you could hear um, more severe screaming and he did not make it. Oh, so you were very close to that part of the tragedy, weren't yeah. you? Very close, I didn't realize that, Andy. In the days and the weeks and the years since, has it gotten easier to think back? Has it gotten harder? How, how has it been for you in terms of, you know, we all know some about post-traumatic stress disorder, I'm sure there's some of that going on for everybody that was on that bridge. Yeah. Um, what's it been like for you? For me, it's been, it's been uh, uh, easier. Um, I think for the first three, four months, I didn't seek help. I didn't feel like I had to. I really thought um, I'm a better person. This is, I'm alive and it, I felt energized. But mm -hmm. then days started to catch up and I started to feel things that didn't seem right. And uh, I would take, um, I knew it was bad when I would leave my office downtown Minneapolis and have to go, you know, four or five blocks away. And I would start one route and then decide, hold it, I should probably go the other route because something's mm. around the corner. Mm. So, so that fear of the possible something awful <clears throat> happening again. Yeah, mm -hmm. it started to really take over. Like mm. um, you questioned every move that you make. Um, and you really think something bad's gonna happen. So that's, that was about three months, four months after, and that's when I decided I need to talk to somebody. And uh, for me, it's gotten easier in the sense that I've, I've embraced it, and I've said um, that it's not gonna define me, but mm -hmm. it's actually been a pretty good thing in the sense that I look at life completely different. Um, I think I'm a much happier person. I mm -hmm. think I'm um, much more patient and understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, I always felt I was a very good person, um, but the little things could, could really push me. 
and now I give people so a bit of a quick dollars. temper, maybe. Or yeah, for a for, quick reactor kind for of for the, the small things, uh -huh. things that I think are common sense uh -huh. that other people may not think that that's common sense. Uh -huh. So, so, so just a gradual letting go of the terror, kind of, and and focusing on positives in your life. Yep, it's it's worked for me. I, I can't speak for anyone else, but. Um, I am surprised if the other individuals who went through this or anything that anyone's went through of, of, of severity to their life, because other people go through other things too that are just not on the news and just because this was on the news doesn't make their situation any less important or valuable. Um, it surprises me that when you come through something like this, if you, if you can't get that message that, that you're here for a reason and, and to use it in a positive way, it surprises me, but everyone handles things differently. Right, and, and just to even <clears throat> acknowledge that is, is a really um, mature thing. Um, when you hear other people um, who weren't anywhere near the bridge talk about, oh, I have sometimes crossed that bridge, I could have been on it, and, and kind of dramatize the what if, does that um, irritate you a bit, or how do you react to that? Because I think, it's a human thing, people do that. Um, yeah, I think at first it did. It's yeah, a great question. I, I you're did. the first person that's ever, ever asked me that. Huh. Honest to God, that you were the first person. Um, and I'm gonna be candid, yeah, it did. I think people don't understand. Uh, I mean, I would switch with them. Right. I would be more than right. willing to switch with them. And uh, I don't think they understand how serious these types of situations are. Mm -hmm. and, um, but when they say that, but, but then with, with that being said, I do think there, I have a friend that went over it four times that day. He does four times every day. Uh, he drives across it to get his work truck, goes back across it to do his job, goes back to drop the work truck off, goes back with his personal car. So he was on it four times that day. So he had a real legitimate yeah. so uh, the odds reason are not in, to say it could have been I. Correct. Mm -hmm. But you know, if, if, if I look at it now, Mary, is that if that makes somebody feel good, it's pretty harmless, so mm -hmm. let them, you know, mm -hmm. but at first it did. Sort of that now, don't sweat the small stuff yep, that's approach. It sounds yep. like you're uh, really yeah. using. In terms of how other people reached out to you and Kim, your wife, and, and your daughter, and your family, um, what was most helpful? Because I think a lot of times when we have someone we know and, and care about and they've gone through something hard, it's, it's hard to know what's the best thing to do. Talk about it with them, don't talk about it with them. Take them food. You know, what what helped you folks the most, you and your wife? Well, I think, uh, you know, I come from a large family, um, and I had a lot of support from my family and a lot of support from my friends. Um, I think it was constant for the first while, but it's like anything. Um, as time goes, people start to forget about it. It's like when you're, you're, you lose a parent mm -hmm. and you forget that, that that individual still needs you around your other parent needs you around because now they're alone. I think time kind of, you forget and you think that it's okay for them, but it is a tough position for somebody to be in. Um, all I can say for, for, for me personally is, I think when those things happen, I think for people to not um, say anything um, when they want to, then, then you should say something. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least ask the person, would you like to talk about it? Because there were That's times- a great idea. Yeah, there were times that, uh, I would uh, be with friends and uh, things weren't feeling right and good and I wish somebody, and I just, I just didn't want to start talking about it because it had been a year later and it's kind of like, okay, that's old now, so. I think people don't realize how long a major trauma thing affects a person too and they may say, oh, it's been a year, he's over it. Yep. You know, and they don't get it, do they, that you'll probably I, never really be totally over it. No, and, and, and it, they're in a tough position because that's that's the the, the great unknown is, you know, they seem to be fine. Right. And maybe if I'm asking, that might be that might be bothersome. I might take him back to that yeah. and that. But you would, I'm guessing, prefer to be asked and then say, oh, let's not talk about yeah. it now, than yeah. not to be asked. Yeah, and I think I think I look at it as like if this is a friend or a loved one, I find it hard to believe that they're going to be upset. If you mm -hmm. asked, I mean, if you pressed and pressed, there's different. But if you were to approach right, them and ask, right. you know, are you all right? Is you want to talk about your experience? I'm here to listen. Um, give them the chance to say no or yes. The memorial. Did you find that the 
you know, on the river road, does that, um, do, do you like it? Does it do what you think it should do? Well, I, I, I think they did a, a wonderful job. It's, it's beautiful. I think it's, it, to me personal, personally, is uh, the 13 that passed away, I think th that's, I think to ask them that question might be even more more mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me Your personally, family. to come out of it, if they didn't do it, it would have been fine. Um, I don't know what they would say, but mm -hmm. I think that um, they did a beautiful job um, to um, shed light on the 13 that passed and, and make their memorial um, aware to everybody. So, Well, we're, we're out of time. This has just been really um, important to hear, and I think it helps us all understand what going through something like this is like, you know, and um, understanding is good. So thank you so much you for bet, coming man. down, and um, it's great, you. great to have you on. You bet. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back again next week. Until then, have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>